presentation is going to go over various qualities that we'd like to see in you as a manager. Some people, when they think of management, they think of control. But control, as we know, is not where an employee wants to live, at least not for very long. Instead, we want you to think of the correct C word, coach, just like you are, right? So as managers, we need to become coaches to our team as they're building and developing skills. This requires you to know that you're coming from a place of curiosity versus a place of control. So really relinquishing that control and that need to, to make sure you're micromanaging or making sure all the ducks are in a row, but really allowing your team to have room to create and have room to have some curiosity. So what this is gonna do, mean for you is that you're gonna have to learn how to create this space for your team and how to frame what growth looks like for them and how to create ongoing dialogue in this space. As you can see, there's a lot of words around create, a lot of themes around create. And this course will outline some of the important skills and qualities of how you can create this space from a place of curiosity as well as openness. But before we do, let's talk about management in general. As you probably know, the role of a manager is very complex. You've got a lot going on. It's a two-in-one position. Basically, it requires you to have some management or technical skills as well as leadership skills, more of those aspirational um, skill sets that you need to have. When we think about management, we think about more, like I said, the technical elements. This might look like dealing with the now versus dealing with the big picture. This might look like organizing and planning and training, facilitating problem solving, and even managing your time versus thinking ahead, what could be inspiring, demonstrating your vision, your values, our mission, guiding the team to greatness. Now, as you can see, both areas are equally important. So don't worry if you're not gonna get it all in the first shot. No manager is perfect, so it takes time and inevitably practice in both sides of the coin. And that's where we're gonna talk about the world of empowering by being a manager. Before we get into that, let's talk about some laws of leadership that we like you to demonstrate here at Carrot. We really want you to lead by example. You should be thinking about that Aerosmith song, walk this way, meaning walk the talk. Whatever you preach, we want you to practice it. In order for your people to buy into your vision and values, you gotta walk those. For example, if you believe in a work-life balance, show them that you follow your own advice. Turn your computer off, don't answer phone calls at a certain time, maybe not working on the weekends, maybe if you have a stressful week, giving yourself some self-care. Another example, if you want your team to admit when they've done something wrong, you've got to do the same. The next level or law of leadership is really leading from the bottom. So now we've got that Drake song started from the bottom, now we're here. I want you to think about elevating your team, not commanding them, supporting them and guiding them along the way. So this whole thing is about leading them into the spotlight and taking you out of the spotlight. Lastly, leading with humanity. We want folks to come together and come to Carrot with their whole selves. When coaches come to work their workplace with their whole self, whether that's at their desk at home or into the office space, they're more likely to give more to our pivoters and that's gonna create a better experience for our pivoters and ultimately better outcomes. We are in great need to lead from the heart, especially in our department. So we want to prioritize outcomes and profit. We wanna over prior, we don't wanna prioritize that. We wanna prioritize people over outcomes and profit. So thinking about leading your people at the center. Now, let's dive into some of those great qualities we were talking about. As you know, there's thousands and thousands of qualities out there that make an amazing manager. We've tried to nail these down to eight qualities within our Carrot Coaching Organization that we'd really like you to translate into your work. And hopefully you've seen your leadership team show these as well. The first is creating open communication, followed by being transparent and holding your team accountable fostering a learning environment, so leaning towards curiosity, leading through change, as you know, we're a startup, change happens, rumbling with vulnerability, really being open, braving trust, learning how to reset when things go wrong, and living truly in your values and allowing others to live in their values. So let's talk about the open communication. As a leader, you wanna create a communication-friendly space where it's safe to express oneself and share ideas, without fear or embarrassment. So this really leads to having active listening skills as well as reflection skills. Really understanding how to master nonverbal communication and read between the lines of what your coaches are saying. 
As you can see from all of this list here though, this sounds a lot like coaching pivoters. Well, it should be. We want you to be able to lean into difficult conversations just like you do with your pivoters and express empathy when they have highs and lows, just like you do with your pivoters. We also want you to be able to give and receive feedback. So part of what you do with coaching is you potentially give some feedback, but you don't necessarily receive it a lot from your team unless it's through a survey. But here is the opportunity for you to really elicit feedback from your team and making sure that you honor their thoughts and their perspective and see them as strengths and not as weaknesses. Lastly, we want you to really consider creating a space of psychological safety, just so where they, they feel like there's no judgment, they can come to you when they need to, they can share and express ideas. So at the end of the day, it's when you think about communication, we want you to think about being constant, being clear, and being open. Next, accountability and transparency. As you can see from our team, we strive thrive on making sure and really strive to lead with transparency. So sharing information when it's important, whether it's good or bad. Our team honors honesty and they don't like to feel, feel like they're in left in the dark or the last one to know. So make sure you're updating your team on anything that will affect their work as soon as it comes up when you can. You can't expect your employees to be accountable and transparent if you're not gonna be do doing the same for them. We also think it's important for you to keep your word and the team to keep their word and own your decisions and they own theirs. So holding your team accountable when they may have said that they're gonna do a deadline, but also give them space to maybe explore why that deadline was missed. When you make decisions, you, you, you own that outcome, whether it's good or bad. So again, if you fall short of that, admitting that, that's gonna really help you build trust, show that you're open with your communication, and it's also gonna show that you're vulnerable. It's not easy to, to, make, to make mistakes and it's not easy, easy to admit them as well. So taking blame when things go wrong is one of the best qualities you can do as a leader. It's essential that you uphold your integrity because that will uphold the team's integrity. Lastly, as we've already overemphasized, accountability is super important, but we have such high standards here at the company as well as, as, well as within our department. That's why we emphasize professional development and really wanting each of our coaches to feel like they're getting quality skills on the job. But in that comes when they have those skill sets and they get those trainings, we want them to uphold the highest standards of when they're coaching their pivoters. The next thing we want to think about is creating a learning environment. So you asking questions versus giving answers. Asking questions will really kind of open you up and it'll help you really hear different innovative ideas that you may have not heard of before versus facilitating an answer for them. You want to create a space in which people feel safe to think outside the box. So really facilitating growth and development where they're able to test new approaches to help others quit or even help things on the team. Yeah, coaches may fail. You may fail when you're testing something out, but that's okay. Your role here is also to hold this space to calculate that risk. If that risk seems like it's going to harm the coach pivot relationship, it's your responsibility to speak up and help everyone find the lessons learned, even when it's good and bad, regardless of the, of the outcome. Also part of your role is to help develop your team's technical skills. So not just developing them within the coaching skills, but their technical skills as well within TTS. And then also displaying those op operational skills and the softer coaching skills as well. You should also be striving to develop your own skills. So not only are you having them develop theirs, but we want you to make sure that you're developing your skills. So doing continued education in your coach training, continuing to evolve your TTS skills as well as your leadership skills. So as a leader, creating a learning friendly environment is basically test and iteration rather than trial and error. So we want you to test something, iterate on it, evolve it rather than like being focused on a fixed outcome. This is going to give you a lot more autonomy, but it's also going to display that the team has autonomy as well to test and iterate things. So making sure that you're relinquishing control and allowing them to have a little bit of room to grow and have their own self autonomy. All right, coming on down to the last thing we want you to focus on as with respect to the team. We want you to focus on leading through change and displaying this. As you know, as a startup, we are constantly changing. Part of the job is rolling with resistance and leading with ambiguity when we don't know what the future holds for us. That means ebb and flowing coaching loads, ebb and flowing in our part-time staff. This, requ this role requires you to have an open mind and be less rigid and more flexible on the job and about change. When you're continuously learning what works and what doesn't work, 
that'll also show the team that they can do the same. So this requires change and it requires you to have some agility. When you have some agility, your team will have agility as well. So leading through adaptability, leading through flexibility, when you, do, when you display those skill sets, your team will also display those skill sets. And also there will be times where you have to reassess and redefine the new goal. Again, like I said before, you're wanting to iterate. We're trying to evolve. So what this might look like, what three months ago might've worked or even six months might work may no longer work today. And your team's gonna have to adapt on the fly and so are you. But if you're able to display that you can lead through a change, they'll also follow. Lastly, we really want you to inspire and embrace the change. When you're embracing the change with open arms, you're maintaining optimism within the team and your team will also embrace the adversity when it strikes. All right, these last four are more focused, less on the team and more focused directly on you as an individual, but also impacts the team. We want you to come to work with your best authentic self. All right, so what that looks like is being vulnerable. Being, we know vulnerability is the emotion that we experience during times of uncertainty. And yes, you wanna make sure that you can control your emotions and you have some self-regulation, but we also want you to have the courage to show up when things are hard and to fully engage with your team and be seen when you can't control or honestly don't know the outcome. Again, that's getting back to transparency. We don't expect you to be vulnerable overnight and we know this is tough. Vulnerability takes practice and it takes time. It also takes getting to know yourself a little bit better as well and understanding your emotions and how you react to those and understanding how your emotions influence your behaviors. And that goes back to our coaches as well. Understanding their emotions, understanding what's going on under the covers will help you get a better sense of how they respond to certain things like stressors, how they respond to enthusiasm, the highs and the lows. So being emotionally open for your team. We also want you to exercise self-disclosure. So to at least at least to your leadership team. So if something's going on, we'd love to know so we can support you, even if something's going on at home. As a leader, it's really important that you strive to model vulnerability. And part of vulnerability leads into our next bullet, which is gonna be trust. So trust by default. How do you do that? Well, we want you to learn to lead with your heart. We wanna make sure when we hire coaches, we hire kind coaches. We can't teach kindness, but we can model empathy. We can model self-compassion. We can model setting better boundaries, and we can also model being straight and direct with our team. So there's no room here for kind of closed door conversations, really being open with that. So that really brings us into trust. Trust is built in small gestures over time, just like vulnerability. It's an iterative process between two people, like yourself and your leader, your manager or supervisor, or within your team. It's based on boundaries, based on being reliable, being accountable, being a vault when they tell you something important, having high integrity, being non-judgmental and generous. Because talking about trust is tough and because the conversations have potential to go sideways, sometimes we don't like to rumble with it. But I want you to learn how to lean in to the rumble. So when we first struggle with trust and don't have the tools or skills to talk about it, it's directly, it involves, we, we start to learn how we're talking about the person versus to the person. So we wanna make sure that you're leaning in and not talking about, but talking to the individual. So developing those professional and personal skills to do that. So developing skills on setting better boundaries, developing skills on being a vault and holding private conversations when needed, really developing skills to be non-judgmental when your team needs it. All of these things will build confidence in your team members and you will show up and they will see that you believe in them. We also wanna make sure that you validate their efforts and encourage them. But the biggest way that you can earn trust is by offering it for free first. So trust in your team members by default to build this solid foundation in your relationships. The last two bullets here, the next one is gonna talk about kind of resetting, being able to have the ability to be agile or resistant, resilient, not resistance, resilient. So learning how to reset after disappointment, after failure and after setbacks is critical skilled in a rapidly changing environment. Knowing that you don't know everything and that's okay. You don't have to be someone's everything. Giving credit when it's due and taking blame when it's needed. So we have to have the courage to walk into hard experiences of failures and disappointments and owning our story so that we get to write the ending. When we don't own our setbacks, we don't own our stories, we don't own the hurt, 
it actually leads, it leads against us. Finding those key learnings depends on recognizing and getting curious about your emotions first and comparing the stories in your head with the real facts. Last but not least, we want you to live in your values so that your teammates can live into their values and your team can live into their values. Living into your values really requires a clear understanding of your core values, having a sense of what those boundaries look like when you cross over and understanding the behaviors that lead to that. So really being your true self at work, displaying that best self of yours, and most importantly, modeling that behavior. When we're vulnerable, we'll be faced with a lot of self-doubt, but having clarity on our values is essential and it's an essential skill to support us during difficult times. And this is also a skill that you'll be able to display to your team and where they'll be able to live into their values. So just a recap of our qualities here. We want you to make sure that you're leading with open communication. It's friendly. It's leading with a space of psychological safety. We want you to be transparent, providing information when, when necessary to your team, holding them to the highest standards, allowing for a fostering of a learning of environment, so really leaning into curiosity, understanding what their developmental, developmental skills that they want to develop, the things that they want to do professionally, leading through change because things will happen. We've got coach flows that will ebb and flow, workloads that will ebb and flow, people will leave and go. Then rumbling with vulnerability. So really being open to your, your emotions, being open to displaying what's going on with you, braving and trusting folks. So being able to trust your team and displaying what that trust and rapport looks like learning how to be resilient, how to reset when things get tough, and most importantly, living into your values so that your team can live into their values.